Hi folks, today I'll be showing you how to paint up this turtle folk bagpiper, including the tartan pattern, in this video sponsored by Hero Forge. So I got this in the premium plastic and I primed it all in black. And I'm gonna start off with wag flesh to get the green of the skin. When I saw the turtle folk and especially the bagpipe option, I knew I had to do this combo partially inspired by a character from a popular uh, D&D streaming game. I'll give you two guesses on what that is. Uh, but I wanted a little bit more of a traditional Scottish garment. So I'm doing this white shirt along with the traditional tartan on the uh, pattern. So I'm going in with a mixture of wog flesh and Elysian green to get the skin tone on the turtle to give a little bit of highlights here and there. I mixed it together so that it was a uh, quite as much of a contrast between the two colors. And then I'm going through with a uh, Celia green shade just to um, bring in a little bit more dimension with this shade, especially on the feet where there's those great sculpt on the scales of the feet here. Uh, and then it also helped to bring out a little bit of the textures in the face and the head. Now I'm gonna go back in with uh, Wog Flesh and Elysian Gray to just really highlight a little bit of the facial features. I also brought this down onto the hands and a little bit onto the feet to bring out kind of the high points and uh, uh, accentuate the scale aspect of the hands and feet. So I did actually start to paint in the shell in a kind of reddier brown, but I decided to go in with Steel Legion Drab um, and paint over that because I wanted, um, a I didn't want to bring as much warmth to the shell, kind of keep it a little bit on the cooler side. So now I'm dabbing in um, just kind of with a stippling effect, Elysian Green, in order to bring a little bit more of that kind of um, reptilian skin texture to especially the smooth part of this head. Um, yeah, that kind of helped bring it out. And then I'm going back in again with Elysian Green to bring out a little bit of like the eyebrows, the nose ridge and the lips, just to make those bits pop out a little bit more. I like to kind of slowly build up that highlight just so that um, you can see, you know, easier to keep adding a little bit of paint here and there than to go back and remove it. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go in with Agrath Earthshade uh, just to bring a little bit of shade to the shell. And I let it pool in a little bit of um, some of the smooth areas, just to give that shell a little bit more of that organic look to it. So it was a little bit heavier than I normally would be for a shade. I'm going in with Karak Stone, and I've watered this down a little bit uh, and kind of dabbing it on, doing a little bit of stippling. I decided to actually water it down a little bit more, kind of tested it out on my finger there and getting in and then I'm kind of dabbing it off and I found you know you can do this either with a little bit of towel or just with your thumb like I'm doing I found that gave it a little bit more of that organic look that you know shells have they don't have those straight lines it's a little bit more squiggly um, kind of look to it and I'm really focusing on the top of those shell bits before I get into the tartan, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Hero Forge. Hero Forge offers dozens of different species along with hundreds of items and clothing options. You can really make your own fully customized miniature here and get it 3D printed and shipped to you so you can paint it up or you can use their color options if you want to forego painting but still want to have a color miniature on your table. So if you are looking to build your own custom miniature today, head on over to heroforge.com and start building. All right, let's get back to the painting tutorial. To start off with the kilt, I am going to uh, base in with Cantor Blue. I thought the blue would be kind of a nice contrast um, accent, uh, compliment, that's the word I'm looking for, to the green of the skin tone 
Um, so I'm kind of keeping mostly in the cooler colors on this miniature, uh, but allowing like the shell and the floor, and also we'll do the magic in a little bit of a warmer color. So I'm coming in with a, um, not a super fine brush, but a brush that has a very nice tip to it uh, in Caledon Sky. And I'm starting with the vertical kind of stripes to the tartan and painting those on. Um, and I'm letting these be a little bit on the thicker side and then I'll actually go in and do a thinner um, kind of checkered pattern here. So I'm being very careful and kind of paying attention to how the fabric kind of folds. I find starting with the vertical, you can kind of find those vertical lines and paint that around. Um, and then go in and add the horizontal lines. Now, if you wanted to do just kind of a um, more checkered pattern, you could stop here and have that, but I wanted to go kind of for the full tartan effect. So once I get all of the kilt done along with the bagpipe bag, I will go in and add a second color to kind of add that additional tartan look to it. So there you can see, yeah, that's already starting to look, um, add quite a bit of kind of pattern to this. Now I'm going in with Warpstone Glow uh, with the same brush. It's got that really nice tip. And I liked using a little bit of a larger brush just because it will hold on to the paint, but you really wanna make sure that you have a nice tip and kind of uh, twist it as you're getting the paint off of your wet palette uh, to help maintain that tip and just a very light touch. Um, you know, it's better, I find it's better to go back to get more paint than to load it up and suddenly have a big blotchy uh, spot. So I actually, for this one, decide to start with going the horizontal lines because I had these guides of the previous lines in there already. So I just kind of started with one line, followed it all the way around, and then I will go through and do all of the vertical lines as well. Uh, and that will give us that tartan look. So you can kind of start to see it there. And now we're going in and I'll show you kind of how to do the vertical lines. Uh, and I find it's easiest to draw lines pulling the paintbrush towards me. Um, so that might, you might find that easier as well. So th there you go. You can see that definitely starts to give it a nice look. And now just to add a little bit of, um, a little bit more dimension to it, I'm coming in with Drakenhof Nightshade and I'm being careful to really not put this on too heavy so that it covers up <laughs> all of the work that I've done. Um, but to really kind of just allow it to sit into those crevices. And yeah, that can really start bringing it out. So instead of leaving the vest black, I decided to lighten it up just a little bit. Uh, I mixed black and a little bit of light gray to kind of get a medium gray and painted that all in, just kind of being very careful not to mess up the pattern area and going back in with light gray to touch that up. Now, the reason I did the tartan before doing um, like the accessories as well as the vest, um, stuff like that is because I, if I was going to, I would rather have the lines need a little bit of cleaning up on like the vest or on that, um, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the term for the spor sporan, the little pouch thing on uh, the waist, uh, rather than having to go back and kind of clean up the lines after the fact, if that makes sense. All right, so I've gotten all of the wood bits painted in and I just based those with dryad bark and now I'm going back in with scrag brown that I've watered down a little bit uh, just to bring out, bring a little bit more dimension, brighten those up a little bit. I got a little bit too much on there, but because it was super watery, I kind of used my finger as a paper towel to dab that off. And to add a little bit of dimension to the tassels on the Sporan, I'm going in with dead white and kind of um, striping this down. I'm just, again, using that very fine brush and getting it almost 
each the lines almost next to each other, but it left a little bit of a gap. Uh, and because the dead white is a little bit of a thicker paint, it does add a little bit of texture. So I can go in with some contrast uh, with Skeleton Horde, just to give it more of that fur look than, um, you know, like a cotton look if I had left it white. Now to do the magic effect coming off of this bagpipe, I'm gonna base in with Uriel Yellow. I actually did three layers of this um, uh, just because yellow is a paint that um, just it is not as heavily pigmented. So you're gonna need a couple more layers to get a really nice opaque uh, look. And then I'm going in with contrast in Pterodon Turquoise to get kind of this cool, greeny, magic-y effect. I like using the contrast over other colors for magic effects because it gives a cool look. Now, I actually forgot to hit the record button, but I had started going back in with Uriel Yellow, just highlighting the very edges of this kind of smoke cloud um, with that to bring it a little bit back to the yellow. So there's that nice kind of transition from the yellow into the green into that turquoise. And the final thing is I'm gonna come in with a little bit of Tesseract Glow, this very vibrant uh, green technical paint, just to add a little bit more of a glow element to it to really kind of pop out the like, no, this is magic, this is not normal. And there you go, there is the finished miniature. I'm really uh, happy with how this tartan effect came out. If you want an even more complicated look, you could go in with a um, third kind of stripe color and add that in. Maybe like a white or a red uh, would really make that pop. But I liked this. It's something that um, once it's on the table, it's going to look really good. And really up close, you're going to get that tartan effect. Um, without it becoming too busy when it's on the table. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to see if you use the techniques that I show you in this video on any of your miniatures. Um, feel free to tag us on social media with pictures of that uh, or let me know down in the comments if you've attempted a tartan effect and how it went for you. Thanks again to HeroForge for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to head on over to HeroForge.com to start building your custom miniature today. All right, I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye.